electric cars all the rage these days and they would continue to be that as the future is inevitably electric however with that ever increasing new electric car releases in the market the need to understand the new electric car specs arises simultaneously this video explains the main numbers of electric cars which include power capacity charging speed and efficiency in a logical and simple format so let me explain To fully understand the upcoming explanations in regards with the electric car specs, a brief familiarization with the core principles of electric engineering would come a long way. But don't worry, it won't shock you. Now, obviously, just like any other electrical device, electric cars need electrical energy to operate. This type of energy can be extracted from multiple sources such as batteries, solar panels or off the grid from a conventional power socket. For the sake of this demonstration, a battery will be used as a power source to power a single speed fan. Once the circuit is closed by connecting all the wires and flicking all switches to their on position, if there's any, electricity will flow from the positive pole of the battery through the fan and back to the negative pole. This provides electrical power to the fan, which can be converted to motion energy by the motors. This flow of energy is possible due to the movement of the negatively charged electrons inside the wires. The first important measure in a circuit like this is the voltage of the battery. In simplified terms, the voltage is the force that pushes those electrons out of the battery and back again. This is measured in what's called volts, or the letter V. If we zoom in on a piece of wire in this circuit, you would see the electrons moving through. Which brings us to the other important measure, the current. You could think of the current as the number of electrons that are pushed in that piece of wire at a certain moment of time. The current is represented with the letter I for some reason and measured in amps or the letter A. The last measure, which is not very important for the sake of this video, is the resistance. This is represented with the letter R and measured in ohms, referring to George Ohm, the creator of this law. The purpose of this is to measure, well, the resistance of the wire and the other constraining factors. The required power of the fan is determined with the wattage that's advertised for on its retail box. The higher the power, the faster the fan speed would be. Thus, more air will be pushed. The downside of higher wattage electrical devices is that they consume more electrical energy. There are two factors that determine the wattage. Those are the voltage and the current. With this simple equation, the wattage can be calculated. For instance, let's say we've got a 12 volt battery and the fan needs 20 watts to operate. Using this equation, the fan would draw 1.67 amps of current. If we upgrade to a fan that needs 40 watts of power, that would draw 3.3 amps instead. As you can see, the wattage is correlated to the amperage and the voltage of the circuit. The higher those two factors, the higher the wattage would be. <laughs> Just like the fan example, electric motors need power, aka wattage from a battery to spin up the wheels. Those motors can vary in their wattage according to the desired performance level. For example, this Nissan LEAF has an electric motor that requires only 110 kilowatts of power at full load. In other words, pushing the accelerator all the way down. Compare that to the fastest car in the market right now, the Rimac Nivera, which draws 1,408 kilowatts from four individual motors. It's pretty apparent how different those cars are. If you want to see how quick that car is, watch my fastest upcoming electric cars video on the channel. In electric cars, the power of the motors can be converted to horsepower. Practically, each kilowatt is equivalent to 1.34 mechanical horsepower. So in those two cases, the horsepower figures are as follows. Now, obviously you won't drive the cars at their maximum speed all the time. 
so there got to be a way to reduce the power going to the motors. This can be achieved through the car's computers, where they can create some resistance in the car's circuitry according to the pedal response using Ohm's law to reduce the drone current, thus this speed and power. Nowadays, the industry's power average for normal cars is around 250 to 300 kilowatts. As for torque, it's exactly the same as conventional combustion cars, so either newton meters or pound feet. <laughs> A very important spec when buying an electric car is the range that can do. This mainly depends on the size and technology of the battery. All electric cars that I can think of use lithium ion batteries, just like the ones in our phones. Unlike milliamp hours that phone batteries are measured in, electric car batteries are measured in kilowatt hour instead. As the earlier is an extremely small measure for electric cars. The bigger the number, the bigger the battery capacity. For demonstration purposes, this is a fully charged 1 kilowatt hour battery. If we connected a 1 kilowatt motor to the battery and kept it running continuously at full power, the battery would deplete its energy in one hour time. Just divide the capacity by the power. So if we apply that on the Tesla Model 3 battery, it would only last for 20 minutes while the motors are continuously spinning. As you can see, this is not a practical way of measuring how long the battery would last, as the motors won't work at full load all the time. So you cannot calculate the range just by knowing the capacity as that depends on the motor's usage of the power. Better ways to calculate the range would be in kilometers or miles, which we'll discuss later. All you have to know though is that capacity is measured in kilowatt hour. A good battery capacity these days is around 60 to 70 kilowatt hour, with exceptional and high performance models pushing beyond the three digit mark. Charging speed is simple. Generally, charging speed is determined according to the power delivery of the source, which is also measured in watts. The higher the wattage, the faster the charge is. However, cars cannot accept infinite wattage figures for charging, as this may cause some serious damage to the internals and may go as far as starting a fire. Therefore, charging speeds are capped at certain wattage limits that are calculated by the manufacturer. To know how long a car will take to charge, just divide the capacity by the speed. Here's an example. This car can charge at 100 kW and it has a battery capacity of 50 kWh. Divide the two and you should get 0.5 hour of charging time, aka 30 minutes. Now, once again, this is a rough timing as the charger doesn't maintain the charging speed at a constant rate throughout the charging process due to safety reasons, so it would be better to calculate it only up to 80% of the battery capacity or by taking the average wattage. There are two ways to represent efficiency. One is kilowatt hour per kilometer which shows you how much energy you are losing in each kilometer you drive, meaning less is more. The other is literally the opposite kilometers per kilowatt hour, which tells you how many kilometers you are making out of a single kilowatt hour from the battery. The more, the better here. This is exactly the same as kilometers per liters, or liters per 100 kilometers, or MPG in combustion cars. The efficiency is dependent on the consumption of the motors and the driving manner of the driver. As I mentioned before, the range cannot be obtained just by knowing the capacity. However, now you could since you know the efficiency, as this counts in all the different factors that deplete the energy. To calculate that, you have to have the efficiency in the later format, which is kilometers for each kilowatt hour. From there, you multiply that by the number of kilowatt hours that you have left in the battery. Doing this will give you an accurate representation of the projected range of the journey, given that the driving manner is constant. Here's an example. This Porsche consumes 28 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers past. As you can see, this is not in the right format, so we need to change this to kilometer per 1 kilowatt hour to get the range. 
So divide by 100 to change it to kilowatt hour per kilometer. Then invert the product to have kilometer per kilowatt hour, 3.5. Now that we've got how many kilometers each kilowatt hour can drive us, to get how many kilometers the entire battery can do, we multiply that by the capacity of the battery. That's in case it's on full charge. If not, multiply the capacity by the lift percentage of the battery. Now I understand that new technologies can be overwhelming to understand, especially if it involves numbers and a bit of math. And electric cars are no different. But hopefully this video gave you a thing or two about electric car specs. And if it did, leave a like and subscribe. Share the video with any interested person in this matter and make sure to watch my other videos in the channel. Until next time, thanks for watching.